The number of 13-year-olds with a disability has increased by 17% in the decade to 2022. That's according to the latest research by the Economic and Social Research Institute. Using data from the Growing Up in Ireland study, the ESRI looks at changes in the prevalence and profile of disability among 13-year-olds. That's between 2011 and 2022. It found that the proportion of that age group hampered by their condition grew from 6% to 23% in that time. Emer Smith is research professor at the ESRI. She's co-author of the report and she's on the line. Professor Smith, good morning. Good morning. Let's start with this. How is a disability defined and what conditions are we talking about? Mothers of the children concerned were asked if their child had a list, any one of a list of long term conditions or difficulties. And then they were asked to what extent that condition affected their lives. So we count as disability those young people who had a condition that reflect affected their day to day activities to some extent or to a great extent. Could that range from depression through to conditions like dyslexia, dyspraxia, uh, the whole range of conditions that, that I suppose we hear greater diagnosis of these days? It covers the gamut of conditions, um, sensory impairment, physical mobility impairment, learning difficulties, um, emotional and behavioural difficulties. So it's quite a broad spectrum that's covered. But what we see is that it doesn't seem to be the case that it's just because we're better at identifying and diagnosing conditions. Mm -hmm. We actually see, if anything, a growing gap in outcomes between young people with a disability and their peers. So they're more likely to have conflict with their parents. They have fewer friends. They're less involved in activities like organised support. And um, they're also less engaged or less positive about school. And did you discover, is there a greater prevalence in boys or girls or is it more or less the same? And is it across all social groups? We've seen quite a gender shift. It used to be the case that boys were more likely to be identified with a disability or long lasting condition. But there's no gender difference now. And that seems to be due to an increase in emotional uh, difficulties among girls. There is a difference by social background with working class uh, Uh, families more likely to have a child with a disability, but that hasn't shifted over time. We've seen an increase across all social groups in the prevalence of disability, but the social gap remains. And do you look at the impact on them, on their schooling or even on their continuation in schooling and moving on to third level? We haven't looked at that yet, though uh, colleagues have done so previously and they've seen an expectation gap. This group is just 13. Um, They'll be followed up at 17. So we'll get a better idea then of how they're faring, what their expectations are for the future and so on. And did you look at, are these long lasting conditions? Well, by definition, they were asked about long lasting conditions. Now, you know, it may cover things like depression or emotional difficulties that could improve over time. So there will be some shift. And again, when we follow these young people, we can look at whether... um, their, their inclusion has increased and maybe whether some of those conditions have changed. And it is part of the Growing Up in Ireland study. How does it feed in now to um, the Department of Children, which I know funds the, the Growing Up in Ireland study and the rollout of uh, new services to, to children in these situations? Yes, well, uh, this uh, is actually part of a research programme with the Department of Children. So it's, it is used directly to inform policy. And one of the highlights highlighted features of this is really the importance of a joined up approach to uh, promoting inclusion across the different domains of children's lives. So the Department of Children is is very well placed to have that kind of um, coordinating role across government in in trying to kind of tackle different aspects of exclusion. Professor Emer Smith, Research Professor with the ESRI and author of that study. Thank you for joining us.